Your success is not dependent upon any man or any other human being in terms of your career, your business at all. And I know I said I was going to do a long form video of my really thoughts and experience with layoffs to just share with you some encouraging ways you can overcome throughout these tough times and obstacles. And if you're not, have not been laid off, how you can always protect yourself from that happening as much as you can. This is not a guarantee, but these are some things you can try to do to ensure that you are valuable enough for the company to recognize that and not lay you off, as well as for contracts you have with clientele for them to not clip it if they have budget cuts whatsoever. So let's just dive right in. I'm going to share some data with you. We know January was a very horrible month, especially for those in the tech space. There were almost 90,000 people that were laid off across several companies. And that number slowly declined, of course, over the course of several months. And I'm looking at an article from TechCrunch. In February, we were at around close to 40,000. March was about the same. April is when we started seeing more light. But I'm sure the impact of it was very heavy in April because I remember on LinkedIn, I saw so many people post about their experiences with layoff. It is heartbreaking. Some of them at six months unemployed, especially those that are in recruiting. I think that industry got impacted the, the most because there were so much people that were in that business in 2021. There was a demand for recruiters because the tech space especially was hiring folks left and right. They had all this money. How did that happen? So remember that the 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 interest rates dropped down so dramatically that it increased people's companies' confidence in terms of uh, spending. So they went out and get as much loans as they could. How home prices went up. Houses were being sold left and right like crazy because interest rates were so low. So therefore, the cost of capital was so cheap that it encouraged a lot of investors and companies to spend much more. And with these companies, instead of holding on to a lot of their cash, as we've seen a lot of their stocks like splurge up, on top of the interest rates going down, that creates so much opportunity for them to be like, you know, why are we going to spend our own cash when we have so much value? Let's go get some more loans so that way we're not touching our cash and hire more people. They got to spend it so that way they pay less taxes. And they created this whole domino effect of them being like, we're just going to hire left and right. And we're going to hire this person, that person, and that person. So much. And then we see the, the domino effect impact of it as well. They, they realize, oh, wow, we had all these people, but we... We really didn't need all these people to do our core implementations. And it's just mind blowing for them to really be able to do that. And the numbers decline. By the time we got to May, it was like 14,000, June around 10,000. And these are numbers from TechCrunch that I'm reviewing right now. And I also checked, cross checked these numbers as well as with layoffs.fyi. It's another site you can check out. And January was same thing around close to 90,000. And it was at 50,000 actually, no, I'm sorry, it was close to 40,000 by February, March as well, and then April, May, it, was, it has gradually gone down to the point where now we're close to getting the 10,000 mark in terms of layoffs that's happening. This is all concentrated around the tech sector. And if you look at this, unemployment rate did not change much at all. And some numbers I want to share with you actually from January, unemployment rate was under 3.5%. And right now, it's at 3.6%. And it barely fluctuated. Like, it didn't even go over 4% over the course of these six months. So the tech sector was getting battered. So you got to think about it. Hmm. Then if the tech sector is getting battered and we're not seeing a huge unemployment rate that goes up, then that means the economy is still okay when it comes to employment. And that is partially true. One of the things that has went down is consumer spending. People are not spending as much. Their confidence is up in spending a little bit more, though, right now when it comes to, like, uh, retail, going to restaurants, buying clothes and things like that. I was checking out a report from uh, McKinsey and restaurants, groceries, people are more confident in spending more in that area now. Despite grocery prices have increased, it's still a necessity and people want to go out, especially during the summertime. Nobody want to stay home. You got to remember in 2020 and 2021, we're so limited. Therefore, people had that itch to just be out. And right now we have that complete freedom. We're not bound to where we are faced right now. So that's pretty much where things have created things in the tech sector for the economy. 
Has it impacted things as much? Not really. I've seen some of the big banks like Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs. They also did some cutbacks. They're usually, I would say, very conservative and very careful in what they're doing. Goldman Sachs, I think, is more risky, but Morgan Stanley has been more conservative. And J.B. Morgan is very conservative. Uh, across, like, salary ranges and such, they're, in, I find, in the tech sector to be the least of hand. I do remember I spoke to them a couple of years ago in terms of an offer, but they were offering the least among all the big banks that I was speaking to. But they're pretty conservative to where they're, they weren't really impacted by all the banks, things that were happening. So whoever who is doing their financials, they're very considerate of that. And big kudos to them as well. And a shot, as well as a shout out for Morgan Stanley. Uh, so where things are right now for you? Where are you right now? You got to ask yourself that question. If you have been impacted by the layoffs, right? It's tough. And the only thing I can offer is prayer to you and build your confidence as much as you can. It's something that you got to psych yourself. I went through this in 2021 for a couple of months, no more than two months. And I'm so grateful by the grace of God. And it was a very transitional period for me. I remember in January, January of 2021, this when it happened. I felt good. I was working at this company. I delivered so much output for them on a Friday, literally on a Thursday night. I stayed up to like 2 a.m. working on some changes, working with this product owner and my next morning, I went to work out, logged in around like 8 a.m. I got the news that we were being cut and, and, and I was one of the people impacted. First time this ever happened, I'm a person of productivity. I always like to give as much great output as I can. I never give any less than at all. I want to make sure that people always remember me so they, they can refer me for other partners, businesses, opportunities in the future. So I want to keep myself to be known for that person, but it didn't cut it in that sense, right? And that's one thing you gotta do. But did I get some red flags? I sure did. I remember in November, they gave me like the the review that you do on a yearly basis, right, as an employee. And they said, there's a lack in your performance because of speed to deliver and you didn't give us as much options. So me thinking in my head, I'm like, could this be true, right? Could this be really be true? Or is this just a HR politics moves? Speaking to some other colleagues I work with, because who these are the people that I actually do products for inside of that company, those were not their words, right? They were happy with everything that I was outputting, and they were very confident in me being able to deliver. But I did experience a slowdown of the works just slightly, right? In the beginning, close to mid of the year, I was outputting like crazy, putting in extra hours even at times, especially like working from home. You're not out as much. Sometimes you're working extra hours and you don't even realize it, right? But so sometimes you got to wind down it to make up for those times that you have given to the company as well. So it got more to that normal state, I would say, where I could honestly say I could probably bang out my entire work in about six hours, right? But I was working nine hours, 10 hours, the other times of the year. So if for me, that was a good balance at that point in time. But they didn't have an outlook, and I also felt like the things I was doing. So I'm a, what they call a user experience designer. If you don't know what that is, we are the brains that design the software, how it works. We do a lot of the research working with users because if your experience is not great, people are frustrated, that means you didn't do as great of a job. But the developers also have to make sure that they code whatever you provide, that it comes to life in the, in the way that you provide it as well. And I couldn't get that quick output in development time at all because I can design pretty quickly, but the development output is much slower. What usually happens is that you're already researching and designing for another project while the developers are working on this project. And I didn't quite have another project in line because I was banging out my work so quick. I worked efficiently and I was outputting productivity. But there's that red signal that I saw and then pretty much like two months later after that time, that was it. So I did get that red flag there. So if you come across a similar situation where you see there is a slowdown of your work, of course, I'm not telling you to always panic and try to be running at 120 miles per hour, but see where there are opportunities, see what's coming ahead, see where budgets are, ask those questions. I was in a smaller company, of course, but if you're at a bigger organization, there's likely a ton of stuff that you can be working on that or in the pipeline. The one negative side to bigger companies is that sometimes you got to wait for all these procedures and processes. I got projects which I 
they were like, yeah, we, we got to get on this right away. But then it takes them like two months to really get back in, on track on it. So that happens. But do not panic. Just have that open dialogue communication to understand what's going on with budgeting and things like that so that you can be prepared for it. Uh, also, one thing I didn't do, I had a lot of companies that were hitting me up around that time. And I was just like, I'm currently on something. I'm not able to take on anything right now. Speak to everybody. That's what I encourage you to do. Build relationships. Speak to everybody, regardless of whether you know you're going to take it or not. It's just building that relationship because you never know where you're going to need them down the line. Be nice to every recruiter as well that you come across, every person that you speak with, because you don't know when you're going to need them down the line. You want to also make sure you receive that same respect. Nobody should be rude to you in the same manner as well. So that's like a couple of things I think you can really do. Make yourself be very valuable. How can you make yourself be part of the core team? Meaning you're a necessity. Meaning if they get rid of you, that is going to impact so many things and it's not going to be good. Therefore, they cannot get rid of you. Putting yourself in that position requires you to go a little bit above the board, putting the extra miles. So yes, you're very good at your job, but what else can you show them like metrics wise to show them that if you do things this way, provide voice your opinion as much as you can. Well, therefore, if you do things this way, you can be much more efficient in that way as well. And be very vocal. I find that when you're loud and the person that always speak to people know you, they're they have a perception that they really need you when you're just a loud person. <laughs> and it's crazy. Sometimes the loudest person ends up making the most money too. That's one of the things that encouraged me to like speak a lot much more and be more vocal about the things that I do that I'm capable. You shoot your shot. Like even if you're wrong about certain things, let them prove you wrong in that sense. Right? So those are some tactics that you can do to make sure that you protect yourself. Uh, and for those of us who are in that layoff situation, of course, you can only keep applying for job, uh, ask for referrals, and possibly see if there's another industry, an outlook of things that may interest you that is kind of similar to what you're doing, but not taking you off your career track, but is another level, right? So you try to acquire one extra skill that still is a fusion of what you like to do or what you like your career to be at as well as something else might be something you look into like ux is not something i always wanted to dive into i just because i love design but i knew a lot about coding as well and developing but i didn't enjoy that as much ux was that perfect fit and when i got in it the demand wasn't as great uh the supply wasn't as great either so i was at a perfect time and then once the man started growing, I was in the right place at the right time. So you want to make sure you're prepared for that opportunity as well. And I don't know what may come out for you because you got to really try to find that within yourself and really ask yourself, what do I enjoy doing? And try to see where there are opportunities to make money and where is possibly trends of where things might may go. When I was owning my skills in college, I took the path of the development instead of design because I knew the technical background is going to help me work much better, be able to understand the underlying technology. It's like building a car. Yes, you could design beautifully, paint the car and everything, but if you know what's going on underneath the engine, I think it's going to make you that much more valuable for people to recognize that because you'll have certain opinion and understanding that a lot of people may not have, but you got to enjoy it as well, right? So you got to really find that unique spot that works for you and everything. Don't let no one intimidate you. Don't let anyone make you feel less than. Don't also settle for the next thing that you get. Another thing too, when a lot of these job offers were getting thrown left and right at me, I knew my worth. I didn't settle for any number. If you're going to pay me market rate, then there's another company right down the line that is you're just one salary away from losing me because someone else is willing to pay the same thing. If they're willing to pay a little bit more and... I'm not enjoying this as much, I'm gone, right? But if you have a company that really values that much, they're not paying that market rate, but above market rate, they want you to stick there, it makes it very hard. Like one of my contracts that I have now, by the grace of God, it's very hard to compete with, so therefore finding another company that's willing, that can just grab me and be able to compensate as much is not easy at all. And I could say whoever, like, is is agreeing to these numbers they know what they're doing they they understand their values completely like they understand that in order for us to retain these talents we got to pay them numbers that are above market rates or else we can lose them 
Uh, therefore, you keep people longer, you increase productivity and increase efficiency. But companies sometimes don't think like that. But you got to think like that to make sure that you go inside of a company that thinks like that and that match happens. Because if you just settle for whatever average salary that everybody else is getting, they're not seeing you that much more valuable. So you're going to be very careful when it comes to that. Be, negotiate wherever you can and make sure they understand your value. Because if they don't, and they're not willing to crunch in that extra thing, trust me, they're going to be able to dismiss you right like that, just the way, just like that. Not saying when that happened to me, I didn't do that, because I did that. That company was definitely paying me a little above market rate, and they understand my value. However, there were some things going on, and they were a much smaller company at that point in time. So be very careful when it comes to that. Uh, but keep applying. If you find nothing, it's just be confident in yourself and figure out, other investments you can do as well. I remember when I was reading the news about Facebook laying off so many people, their stocks went all the way to under 100, close to $90. I bought in. I bought in around that time and now I'm up almost 4x my original investments. And it's by the grace of God that I felt that knowledge too. There's companies that I spoke with in the past, they didn't hire me, we didn't have a conversation going, but I bought of their stock. So I still own a piece of their stakes and they all have gone up from the, the end of last year because 2022 I think was that bottom and we're right now at a normalized state and things are either about to go through a bullish run or hit another small downturn but I don't think it's going to be as drastic because inflation is much more under control than it has been. The CPI numbers are way under from where they are at earlier during this year. So it seems what the feds have been doing by increasing interest rates have slowed things down therefore allowing the company to be, to be a bit more stabilized. But definitely be encouraged. Uh, there's this uh, verse. I can't think of it right now. It's in Timothy. But Paul shares a lot of great things inside of the scriptures, inside of the Bible. And he was in prison, but it felt like for him, he had everything that he had. Like, how can you be in prison and feel like you have everything that you have? It's just mind-blowing, right? But that requires faith and understanding that you cannot be subdued to the conditions around you. Let your mind, your relationship with God be what really controls your riches and your wealth. For some who are not believers who may be watching this right now, it's a hard thing to fathom. I understand because you haven't dug into it enough as I have. But I have a strong relationship with God now where... I feel like I could be stripped of everything and lose everything tomorrow, but I'll still be okay. I'll know and I'll figure out a way to get back on my feet because I know I have God by my side to help guide me along the way. There's so many things that I don't know where the knowledge came from, the wisdom came from, and I'm just able to execute. So that's where I really lean upon God. So I will pray for you and I encourage you definitely to keep striving through, believe in yourself, Build that relationship with God. Get to know God because it is something I think that's going to help you get through so many difficult situations in your life. And just because you know God and have that relationship does not mean things are going to be easy for you and you're no longer going to go through pain and suffering. In fact, you know what they say about the more money, more problems. It is so true. The bigger your wealth get, the more problems you'll have. And the more closer and more intimate you build your relationship with God, Yes, the more success you're going to have, but the more problems is going to come with as well. The only difference is you're going to know how to navigate through it so well, so well. There's nothing that's going to be able to stop you. Your confidence is going to be at a whole nother level. So that's what I encourage you to really try to build up today. For, for those of us who are impacted by the layoffs or have the fear, do not fear. Let all that stuff go. And I'm praying that you are able to overcome through all this time. So hope you found this insightful. Like, share, subscribe. If you have any questions for me, drop it in the comments below. Peace and love, trust in Jesus. Have an amazing one. Hustle, hustle.